Not doing this, you should definitely try it out. Let's talk all things drop shot, break everything down, baits, line, rods, reels. We're gonna do everything today, so let's jump into it. How's it going guys? Travis here from Taco Bros, AKA Taco Prez on Instagram. Ashley's with me as usual. QTR underscore 46. Check him out. You still gotta change that shit, dude. Okay, so today we're gonna talk all things drop shot. This is something that you should be doing if you're not doing it. Also, if you guys notice a lot on this channel, I am very finesse forward right now. What's kind of doing everything up here is smallmouth. So over the last couple of years, I've put a lot of time into learning, you know, really refining in detail all of the most popular finesse techniques so I can learn and, you know, expand on some things that I've been shown and maybe pass along to you guys. So drop shotting is one of, if not the most effective ways to target fish from shore, from kayak, from a boat, no matter where you are, you should have a drop shot with you at all times. If you're not familiar with a drop shot, let's uh, we'll use ashes. So drop shot is in general, it is a, so we're gonna have, you're gonna have a hook, you're gonna have a bait, and then you're gonna have a very long tag end with a weight tied on the bottom of it. Uh, you're gonna generally use a shorter rod for this, and you should use braid deleter. Please use braid deleter. This is something where, you know, the benefits of that braid, especially using high vis, are very important. So basically what happens, the weight sits on bottom, your bait sits a little bit up in the column, and you can kind of work it towards a fish. This is especially effective if you are fishing somewhere with like a scummy bottom, which right now there's scum literally everywhere. I cannot wait for it to leave so I can go back to dragging a tube every once in a while. That being said, this works 365 days a year. This is like one of those things, like a Ned rig, a drop shot, swim baits, like that's just things that work all the time. Sanko. This is one that will catch all ranges of fish. Uh, most guys at the store, honestly, their personal best is coming a drop shot just because it's effective everywhere. You can really, really do it anywhere. So today we're going to, we're gonna start here with, I'm gonna start with baits. Uh, Cause there's a couple different categories of drop shot baits and we'll get into that. So the first one that I think is gonna be the most common is like a worm style bait. So my favorite and my go-to is going to be a robo worm. So this is going to be the straight tail four and a half inch uh, colors, which is T. This has been a go-to for me for literally as long as I can remember, probably one of the first drop shot baits I ever threw. So this is the worm style we'll say. Then we're gonna have kind of a swim bait style or paddle bait style. A popular one is going to be the Hazadong Shad. So this is something that a lot of guys throw. It's a very popular bait for us in the store. This is a good one if you're a nose hook drop shotting, I would say would be the most popular way. Some guys will thread them and I'll show you a couple different ways to rig after. And then the, there's a lot in this category. So baits is something that there's not a lot of wrong answers for on a drop shot. One that has kind of been taking over everywhere and is the number one thing winning and catching them on lakes in Japan like Biwa is a dice style bait. So this is the raid one way. I uh, did a full video on this guy a couple weeks ago. So if you want to deep dive into this, go check out that video. Another great one that's, I would say in the dice category, which is something that not a lot of fish have seen is going to be the Duba from D style. This is a really, really cool one with these appendages that are built into the, to the cube in the middle. Tons of brands are making these now. So this is one of the most explosive categories in fishing right now. I think you're going to see guys a lot of guys doing stuff like this at iCast. Then we have the pintail style. So this is going to be a drop minnow from Great Lakes Finesse. This is a cool one because they finish everything matte. So there's no shine on it. It's uh, really natural looking in the water. And this is completely neutral buoyant. So uh, instead of, you know, some other ones will just kind of do this. Some others will do this. This one stays perfectly flat in the water, which is something really cool with them. And then the other thing I like to do is going to be kind of wacky rig style. So this is a evergreen bow worm. Uh, this has been a popular one in the store. Basically you just, what well, you wacky rig it and you throw it on a drop shot. So the weight hits the bottom and the wacky rig kind of sits in the middle. You can drop shot anything. If you're, let's say you're a G crack fan. One thing that we like to throw on it is a bellows gill and they happen to make it 
in a very small two inch profile. Depending on the time of the year, this is something that I will throw a lot. This would be on the more exploring end of drop shot baits. So those are all the baits that I like to use. And these are just some brands you can kind of, you can kind of go off from there. Now for hooks, there's a few hooks that I really like. Decoy makes a great hook. That's gonna be the shot rig, so check that one out. We're also gonna have the Ryugi Fog Shot is ultra, ultra popular. This one in particular, this is the G Finesse Amart. Uh, this is a number two. This is one of my favorites. We also throw, this is a newer one to the market. This is going to be the Nishine Lure Works DS hook. So this is, a, I'll get into this one. This is kind of a unique hook, but serves a very, special purpose and yeah that's it i don't get too complicated if i'm throwing a wacky rig sometimes i will throw a wacky rig hook on but a lot of the times i can kind of get away with it because i use those thinner worms i can get away with my drop shot hook and then also depending on what bait depending on the size of the hook in general i'll run a number two but if i'm using a dice style bait i tend to go down to a number four just have a better hookup ratio and more confidence in that size and then if i am using some of the worm stuff i'll show you some of those other hooks Another one that's ultra, ultra popular. This is the owner cover shot hook. So this is a kind of a straight shank worm hook with a keeper on it. This one's super popular if you're fishing in and around grass because you can hook a weedless, which I will show you that as well. I'll show you guys kind of the different styles of hook. So this is a nose hook. So basically this is that number two. Uh, this is Ashton's rod actually. He's been trying it that New Zillion, which is really cool. He's using an owner mosquito hook here. Uh, this is a nose hook drop shot. Let's say I'm getting short strikes. I will switch to this. This is kind of when that Nishine hook comes into play for me. So I will thread them on. Now this, the Nishine hook also is great at nose hooking. You have to tie a snell knot. Now the great thing about a snell knot is you can see, I'm just kind of holding the top and the bottom. It stays 90 all the time, which is great, especially for hookup ratios. A lot of times when you're tying these on, you know, it'll kind of roll in the water, which you don't want, or it'll kind of ride up a little bit weird. With that snell, it keeps it on perfectly straight. This is me threading it. If I'm not really getting it them too good on the nose hook, sometimes I will thread it. I'll only do this if I'm getting a lot of short strikes. This is the Nishine Trailer Keeper. So this helps keep your bait on there a little bit longer. It's really good with some of the softer plastics. It can just kind of help with durability. Again, if I'm threading it, this is kind of where I go with that. And then that Nishine hook with a Snell knot. Okay, now if I'm in grass, something that I do quite often is actually use that owner cover shot hook and I will rig this guy up weedless. So you can basically Texas rig your drop shot bait, which is gonna help it come through cover easier. It's gonna keep junk off of it. Uh, you can just fish in a little bit crazier, heavier, gnarlier stuff and keep your bait clean and, and kind of get in there a little bit better. So if I'm in and around grass at all, a lot of the times I will go to the cover shot hook and I will kind of rig it this Texas, Texas style. This hook's also great for people who want to thread their bait on like I just showed with the Nishine, but this is my preferred way for fishing in and around grass. And then when I'm in and around grass, my weight actually changes. So 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm just throwing a standard teardrop style weight. So this is probably a quarter ounce weight. This is tungsten. I throw a lot of tungsten. Lead's great as well. This is going to be a pinch end. So basically you put your line through this, you pull it tight. I always do a couple loops around it, but uh, this is just a pinch end and then this is a teardrop style weight so when i'm fishing in and around grass i go away from the teardrop style bait and i will go into this more cylinder style weight so it's going to have a thinner profile which is going to allow you to come through grass and other structure like that a little bit better not so great in and around rock but really excels when you're fishing in and around any type of grass or weed or anything like that so if you're doing that definitely give the cylinder style a try. And then, like I was telling you guys before, this is a style of bait that has gotten extremely popular. This is the OSP dice rubber. So this is when I go down in size. Normally I will throw a number two size hook. This is me throwing a number four size hook. Um, and most things are just nose hooked. It's not overly complicated when you're drop shotting. So yeah, this is just how we will fish the Sakura rubber. And then same thing, I just run, mo if, I'm, if I'm in grass, I'll switch to the other one. Generally, I won't use this in grass. It tends to pick stuff up uh, for whatever reason. But most of the time, I'm just running this teardrop style weight um, and it works really good. Okay, so line. I am a huge fan of that All Might line. I use it on pretty much everything. I'll go between that and the X8 Grand from Daiwa. 
I like a high-vis line. This is a technique where you definitely want to be able to see your line. So pink, you know, high-vis yellows, uh, like anything that I can really, really see. This tends to go white pretty quick and I almost don't mind it because I can see the white pretty good, especially on top of the water. Now this is a sinking braid, so sometimes that can be, it can kind of get out of sight pretty quick, but generally I stick between these two guys. I have no problem with it. The just high vis is so important. And then for size, 10 pound is pretty standard. 15 pound is okay. I know a lot of guys would go down to like eight, five pound braid and then tie to a leader. So size is kind of your discretion, but high vis, you should really be using high vis if you're doing drop shotting. That way you can really watch your line, see where it is, see if it moves, because a lot of times it's a very soft bite when you're drop shotting. You can miss a lot of fish if you're not paying attention. So for line, High vis, 100%. Leader's a tough one. So I will run anywhere from a, I've run 10 pound, I've run five pound. So that's kind of my gamut. Seven pound is my preferred line for most things finesse. We will go down to five pound, especially when I'm throwing dice style baits because I'm using that smaller hook. Everything just downsizes for me with the hook. Now, when I'm fishing the worm style hook and I'm fishing it in and around cover, I'll go up to that 10 pound just so I can have a little bit of backbone in the line uh, so I can get it out of there. Most of the time I'm gonna throw, you know, seven, eight pound fluorocarbon as a leader. Seems to work great for me. I'll only downsize if I'm in ultra crystal clear water and I'm kind of noticing them being a little bit line shy, but for the most part, you know, that seven pound seems to kind of be the deal. And you don't have to overcomplicate it. Weights, based on how deep you're fishing, I carry all the way from probably an eighth up to a half ounce. If you are a current guy, you're gonna to wanna to grab some of the heavier stuff, three eighths, half ounce, especially when that current's ripping, you need to keep this thing in place. You don't want it traveling down with the current, so keep that in mind, and then go as light as you possibly can. If you're fishing 10, 10 foot of water, you don't need a three eighth ounce. If you're fishing, you know, 30 feet of water, you probably don't need an eighth ounce. You probably need a three eighth ounce just to get it down there. Uh, and to kind of keep it on the bottom. I run 3000 size reels, that's just my standard. 2500 actually seems to be more normal for drop shotting. Uh, and some guys are even going down to 2000, especially if they're you know, just making those short pitches. You don't need a lot of line on them. You just need a great drag system. I like 3000s, 2500s are kind of that standard for drop shotting. Okay, so there's really three different subcategories of drop shotting that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. They're gonna require a little bit different everything really if, if you get into it enough. Now, most of these are gonna be done on one rod. 610 medium light seems to be the top tier, fast, extra fast, kind of like a like a single hook rod. If you're, if you're a jig guy, you know that you need an extra fast rod when you're throwing a jig, single hook, same basic premises, just in a spinning. So softer tip, backbone, get them in. Even though you're using light line, that's that's kind of been the recipe. Staple for me, NRX Plus, 822 DSR. Uh, I actually have several of these. This is my older NRX Plus. This is actually a medium, but it's a mag medium. So that tip is really soft, great backbone. I don't lose a lot of fish on this. This is my everyday in and out, straight up drop shot rod. Okay, so a couple ways that I like to just straight up drop shot. You can throw it out there, let the weight hit the bottom, and then you can kind of shake your bait. Another thing that really gets overlooked and I think is becoming more and more popular with the addition of so many more, you know, neutral buoyant baits is dead sticking. Now, as you, you know, throw your bait out there, a lot of guys will overwork it, which freaks the fish out. You lose bites, you miss you miss action that you possibly could have just by doing too much. Sometimes doing nothing is the perfect amount. So if you're seeing fish and you're not getting bit, sometimes just slow it down, don't move your bait, try something neutral buoyant. The Great Lakes Finesse make great ones. Uh, there's a bunch of other options as well, but neutral buoyancy is something that can be key, especially if they're not eating if they're not eating aggressively, leaving it alone is a huge, huge deal. Okay, so option two, drop swimming. Now this is something that is wildly underutilized. So the drop swimming is basically where you pitch it out there, you kind of let the bait hit the bottom and you slowly bring it back to you. So this is just kind of cruising on bottom, that tail's working hard, it looks kind of like a, it looks like a bait fish that lost its school. They cannot stand it. Now for this one, I use a specific rod. I bought this rod originally for mid strolling and fell in love with it for, uh, it, it's a great mid strolling rod, but it is really, really good for drop swimming because it is parabolic. So generally 
they're chasing this down, which means they're moving fast. And because this is a solid tip rod, it gives you lots of room for this to load up. This is gonna be kind of a swim bait bite, I would say. Kind of if you're throwing a Okashira or you're throwing a, like a swim bait or an underspin or something like that, it's gonna be more similar to that style. So having that little bit of you know parabolic in this rod, which this rod is very parabolic, it just seems to not lose fish at all. I've done it on the other ones and you know sometimes you have success and sometimes you don't. This Medusa is phenomenal for drop swimming. So if you're looking for a dedicated drop swimming rod, which is also, you know, a great mid strolling rod, check out the Medusa in that new Orochi X10 lineup. Now, if I'm power shotting, I generally will try to go with a heavier rod. I'll use a medium. I don't really get into the medium heavies. I'll use a seven foot or, you know, somewhere in and around that seven foot I'll jump my line up from, like I said, a seven pound up to a 10 pound fluorocarbon. Power shotting is kind of one of those things where a lot of guys will go to casting, which is an excellent option. Uh, you can kind of, based on how you're gonna fish, what hooks you like to use, everything like that, the options are endless. Uh, there's no wrong answer when it comes to power shotting. Just make sure that you're using a rod that is gonna be good for single hooks. That's kind of the deal with this. Casting or spinning, doesn't really matter. I like it on spinning. I'm, I've become back in love with uh, spinning rods. It's, I feel like I only use spinning rods for the last little bit. And yeah, power shotting can be ultra, ultra efficient. And it's just a great option when they're kind of in and around the grass, but they're not eating jigs and they, you still wanna throw something finessey at them. You can get in there with a power shot. So give that a shot. Last but not least in the ultra finesse. So this is when I go down to that number four style drop shot hook. I go to the NRX plus 821 NRR. This rod has a bunch of jam, but a really soft tip. So I don't over hook set these fish. The, the tip loads up very nice comes down deep into the blank, they stay pinned, uh, especially with that number four hook. It's very, very light wire, and I generally go down in line size. This is 11 pound All Might. This is five pound fluorocarbon, ultra, ultra finesse stuff. This is a tough rod to beat in that category. So check out the 821 NRR. And that leads me to another point. Don't always trust what the rod recommends. Sometimes you have to feel it and use it to find other uses for it. For instance, Chris bought this rod for Ned rigging and he was like, dude, this is one of the best drop shot rods I've ever used. I started using it for drop shotting. I don't think I've thrown a Ned rig on this ever since. So that same with the Medusa. The Medusa is kind of known as Mega Bass's mid strolling rod. It just turned out to be like a great drop swimming rod for me. I've used a drop shotting as well, just straight up. It's been phenomenal. So. That is kind of our take on drop shotting. Now for knots, I'm just gonna break this one down really quick. I almost always use either a Albright knot or I, if, if I'm not being lazy, I will tie the FG. The FG is a very tough knot to beat. There's no slip in it. It's just sometimes it's a lot to tie. So an easier one is the Albright or the Alberto. Those are great knots. Um, so definitely check a video out on those. And then for tying the hook, the Nishine requires a Snell knot. Other than that, I just use a straight up polymer knot, uh, go back down through the eyelet so that it stays nice and straight, and then pinch in, you kind of pinch it on there and give it a once, once over. I like to anyways. If, if you get caught in the rocks, it's gonna break off anyways. So yeah, that's, uh, that's drop shotting from us. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is something that, I mean, if you're not throwing a